Well, howdy folks, it's Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician here. It's been a while since I made a video, I know that, but I had something come across my lap that I think is good information for everybody involved and just anybody out there. Um, you could definitely run into this issue. So, what we have here is a 2012 Subaru Impreza. <clears throat> it is a limited four-door hatchback edition. Um, has the 2.0 liter engine in it, so 2.0 liter engine. There you go, right there, 2.0 liter engine. All right, so the complaint when the customer had originally called me the first time was that um, I guess the sun was driving the vehicle and it all of a sudden began to smoke and it began to smoke really bad. So they got it to where they were going and it was smoking so bad that at one point somebody actually thought the vehicle was on fire. Uh, the vehicle never did catch on fire, but I'm now starting to wonder just how much smoke are we talking about. And I'm also curious as to what type of smoke. I'd be willing to bet it was a, it was a white, kind of grayish type smoke. But anyways, so, so just to recap there, bottom line is driving the vehicle, it began to smoke really bad. Got to where they needed to go, where it continued to smoke really bad. So... Just off the top of my head, you know, you're thinking, well, maybe a coolant hose broke or something like that. So the vehicle comes in, and the first thing that I noticed is when I opened up the radiator on it to look down in there, there was pretty much no coolant in there. There wasn't too much coolant at all, which, you know, didn't surprise me because, again, the vehicle had been smoking really bad, so obviously coolant had leaked out somewhere. So I got to look in, and I started noticing that we also had puddles of oil not just coolant but puddles of oil and coolant caked up on top of the engine which you can see all right here as well right now in this area specifically we had this mixture this is uh, from me working in here but right here you can see some of the original mixture let me see if I can get a light going there okay and so I noticed we had this mixture and so Right off the bat, I kind of thought, oh no, uh, we're looking at a blown head gasket. But I also noticed that the hose for the coolant inlet to the block was, as you can see, it's swollen, right? And so that goes from here to here, okay? And I noticed that hose was really swollen. And I thought, oh, wow, you know, did we get some type of cross-contamination in there? What's going on? So I looked further into what's known as the engine coolant inlet. That's it. That's all Subaru lists this as, engine coolant inlet. It's on the 2012 2.0, right? It sits right here. Now, here's what's, what's interesting about the, the design of this, okay? So you've got your coolant crossover pipe right and your coolant flows through here and it comes into here and it goes down into the engine block okay so it flows through here bloop, right goes goes into the engine block there okay and so that is coolant into the engine block now what is this right here this is part of your positive crankcase ventilation system and this is your oil mist or your oil vapor okay so you have coolant that flows through here and oil mist or oil vapor that flows through here, all right? Now you've got an O-ring on each one of these, okay? But if that O-ring begins to fail, you start mixing oil and coolant. Now then, remember that the original complaint was that they were driving and it just began to smoke really bad and all that other stuff and they got to where they were going and it smoked so bad that they even thought it was on fire well obviously as you can see there is oil and coolant all the way back in into there on top of the block so obviously something broke as you can see something burst finally something finally gave in and it started spewing oil and coolant all over the engine which would answer as to why it smoked so now then that's your that's your issue right there however as we started going through the system 
we originally thought, okay, we've got a little bit of uh, oil in our radiator and our water pump. Let's go ahead and change out the hoses that we have found that are swollen. Let's do the radiator. Let's do the water pump. Well, as we began to get into replacing the radiator, removing it, we realized after pulling the lower radiator hose that there was a lot more engine oil contamination than we could have ever thought. And altogether, from what we drained out of the radiator as we were removing it, we probably drained at least one and a half quarts or at least one and a half of these mason jars. And so let me see if I can get you some light into that one also here. Okay, and that is just a really thick ah, coffee mixture. So, that's really bad. I mean, there's a lot in there. So then this morning, I went ahead and went further into it because I realized if, it's, if there's that much in the bottom of the radiator, it's just puking thick, thick coolant and oil mixture then I'm curious did it make its way to the heater core and sure enough you can see there the heater core on the inlet has got oil now the outlet is not as contaminated well actually yep you can see you can look farther back in there you got some coolant there in the front and you've got oil so the heater core is also contaminated everything is contaminated so then I went ahead and I pulled the temperature control unit or the temperature control switch, which tells you whether or not your engine is overheating. And I have that right here. And if you look right here, you can see that that is covered in that gunk. The same stuff that's in our jar. Okay, and so here's, here's what's gonna happen when something like this, so this, this temperature sensor, your engine temperature sensor, it is made and designed to read liquid chemical only, antifreeze, coolant, right? It is not made and designed to read properly the temperature of anything else which is why you always want to make sure that you have proper coolant levels in your vehicle because on vehicles where this sits on the top of the engine if your coolant level goes below the sensor it's not designed to read atmosphere so you actually won't know if your vehicle is running hot or not and as you can see this temperature sensor is completely gunked up okay so bottom line is that means that this mixture has gotten deep into the engine, all throughout the heater core, all throughout the engine. Uh, coolant ports on the cylinder heads are going to be clogged, I bet you. So we also ran the codes on this. All right, and I'm going to show you some codes here. Exhaust camshaft position timing over advanced bank two. That's not a fun code to have. We'll come back to that one, okay? We have catalyst system efficiency below threshold. I bet you that code was thrown when it started smoking real bad. Transmission control system uh, malfunction indicator light request. That means that there was a problem with the transmission. An engine coolant temperature circuit low. Well... We obviously know what's happening there, what's going on there. So that along with actually this code, these are the two codes that I'm most concerned about. So now let's get into what I feel like per the evidence we have. Here's, here's another heater hose that's swollen. Okay, and that's the inlet hose and you can see the You can see that? Ugh, that's bad. Just not good, man. Okay, so you can see that there. Okay, so 
This is what we have finally come up with based off of the evidence that we have. First off, if you look at this corrosion on here, let's see. Okay, this is not something that just happened. All right, this didn't just break like this one time and then all of a sudden everything just just went to crud you look how on the coolant side here you look how on the coolant side here you see how that material is just you see it's wilted away it's corroded it's almost like acid has touched it well obviously when you mix oil with coolant which oil is oil coolant is polyethylene glycol then uh you're going to have some chemical reactions there, and this material is not made to withstand those chemical reactions, and it begins to break down, okay? So, but what happened first, I'm, I've come to realize, is these O-rings failed, okay? And it's ultimately this O-ring on the oil side that failed, and so it began to, I'm going to say, trickle oil into the cooling system. I'm even going to say it's probably been doing this. It's probably been mixing oil and coolant now for, I don't know. I'm going to say at least three to six months, depending upon how much this person drives. So it has been slowly mixing engine coolant and oil together like that and has been compromising the cooling system little by little every time it's been driven right up until the point that it corroded the plastic, this part, on the coolant side after being exposed to oil constantly and then went ahead and partially broke apart and blew off and caused all the oil and coolant mess, caused everything to, to you know, smoke, make it look like it was caught on fire. But this has actually been going on for some time and that's how and why we see this much gunk inside inside of the transmission or, or inside of the radiator. I will be right back, folks. I just had somebody pull up. Okay, I am back, folks. Um, oh, shoot. I had a customer come in. I had to go do something else. So bottom line is this. Uh, we could go ahead and put a new radiator in it and a new water pump and the few hoses that we were hoping and thinking that we needed to replace and a new crossover, right? But that's not going to fix the amount of contamination that we have. And like I said, we've got contamination into the heater core. The block is contaminated. The cylinder heads are going to be contaminated. Every gasket that's a coolant gasket is going to be contaminated with oil. So... We do that work, and I guarantee you, um, shoot, three to six months from now, maybe even 12 months from now, bottom line is the next thing that's going to happen, if it doesn't happen right when we finish the job and start it right back up because it's so contaminated, um, that engine's toast. The engine is done. It's been contaminated with everything. The only way I could think or see to actually... Make sure everything is good is to pull the engine, break it all the way down, pull the heads off of it, pull the timing off of it, pull the heads, send everything out to be checked, make sure it's still good at the machine shop, and then from there have, have the heads machined, have the block machined, and then put everything back together. Interesting thing about that is that is actually just as expensive or even more expensive than if we just went ahead and bought a good used engine. And there's quite a few good used engines out there for decent prices that have way less miles than what this one currently has. This one currently has 160,000 miles, and uh, we can get engines with 100 to 120,000 miles all day long for them. So, so that's that's what we're looking at, folks. So I'll give you an update on all this later on. I'll let you know what direction we decided to go in and all that other good stuff what what ended up being the most cost effective and where we're going to go so in order to avoid this i would say it is probably prudent regardless of what the factory tells you to go ahead this part right here by itself 
is not too expensive. So, and considering what can happen, I think it's smart to go ahead and once a year go in here. If you own one of these 2012 to 2018 Subaru Impreza's, from what I understand, if you own one of these once a year, go in and replace your engine coolant and replace that inlet tube and make sure it's not leaking and you can avoid a fix that's going to cost thousands upon thousands of dollars. So, Alrighty folks, well this is Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician. I'm getting ready to sign off. I really appreciate everybody checking out my videos. Keep watching my channel, keep supporting me, and I'll be back. Talk to you guys later.